so fellow explorers of the age of artificial intelligence. Welcome to a journey of ex exploration of this new technological world. Today, we will find ourselves on the board of a caravella, the famous Portuguese ship of the 15th century, a ship of innovation and progress sailing into unexplored waters. As we navigate these uncertain seas, one question appears large on the horizon. How do we ensure that the compass guiding this ship is ethically sound? In an era where AI floats of some of the most important aspects of our lives, as I will try to convince you today, the stakes have never been higher. With the power of AI, we must also grapple with a lot of ethical dilemmas and moral difficulties it presents. Our journey today will delve into in the heart of this matter. We will explore the interplay between technology and ethics and the profound implication it holds for society, for our values and for the very definition of what it means to be human. Together, we will examine some of the philosophical consequences for fundamental areas of society, such as the implication of art for creating uh, robotic art, or how human intimacy will be influenced by AI, and how AI can improve the efficiency of medicine. So join me on this intellectual odyssey, exploring the role, the role of ethics in the storming seas of uncertainty. Together, let's chart a course towards a future where technology and ethics are not actually adversaries, but co-captains of a more harmonious and brighter technological world. In November of the last year, I gave a talk at the Seoul National University, and I had the privilege to visit the National Modern, of Modern Museum uh, in Seoul. And I saw this very interesting work of art the first thought, th this is a statue that the robots can move up and down. And the first thought that came to my mind was the story of Sisyphus, right? That had to push this rock into the summit of the mountain. And whenever the rock reached the summit, the rock would fall down again. And Sisyphus had to push it again and again in an endless cycle. And this would show that the life is meaningless. Another example are the actual the action painted robots by the Portuguese artist Lionel Mora that with total autonomy, then can paint different kind of artificial methods. But a, qu a possible question that you are asking right now in doing faces is, <laughs> why is this art, right? So many people think that art can only be made by humans and that the use of technology should not be considered artistic in the first place. And this would represent a sort of immoral kind of artistic cheating. However, I do think that this might be the wrong way to look at this issue in specific. A brilliant philosopher named Alan Turing developed an intelligence test to understand whether a machine could think as a human being, however smart that might be. <laughs> Turing was not focused on the classification of cognitive abilities, but he was trying to recognize that the future of technology will reshape the way we understand the concepts of intelligence and thinking. And I think this is a great insight to use in these same uh, art, uh, artistic robots. Instead of claiming that a, a, ro a work of art cannot be considered artistic, we must actually invert the question and ask, how can this technology help us in understanding what a work of art is? And I think this is a, a, a better interesting insight that can contemplate the new artistic rules, as well as also acknowledging the role and the significance of robotic art for the world today, and also to gain deeper insight into our very own humanity. A second domain that you'll probably find a lot of ethical uncertainty is human intimacy. As you are probably aware, sexuality is a very important part of what it means to be human. We know that sex industry is estimated to worth more than $30 billion per year, considering traditional sex toys and pornography, and following this, several companies are actually developing sex toys merged with AI technology that raise several ethical questions that I think we should do. A sex robot is a technology that uses an anthropomorphic design, mainly recreating several feminine characteristics that are usually appealing for us. These robots can speak and they can interact with the buyer and are used for obtaining sexual pleasure. But is this technology ethical in the first place? So should we allow those companies to develop and use this kind of technology? Or there are ethical reasons to ban them? 
Um, and I think an interesting uh, positive argument in favor of this technology is based on the idea that we should use technology to help humans, beings, to achieve a better life in every aspect of it, including the fulfillment of sexual pleasure. And I think sex robots can actually achieve this goal by allowing people to explore their sexual desires without any ethical damage being caused. This technology can also help uh, people who, for several reasons, cannot engage in a fulfilling sexual lives due to several reasons such as mental or physical disabilities. And this provides them a chance for them to experience this vital aspect of being human. We are also all aware of the ethical issues tangled with human trafficking networks that usually are tangled with prostitution. If we can create a technology and a better technology that is not a choice, but it, I think it's a moral imperative we should do it, sex robots can actually have the potential to step up and help us fighting sex trafficking in the world, using technology to create a more ethical world. Yet, not everyone shares this very optimistic view about sex robots. A counter-argument states that sex robots they perpetrate a view of women that is sexist and misogynistic, and portraying them unethically as submissive objects without any desires or control. And this can also distort real-world interactions. I think it is crucial for our society to promote fair and ethical judgment of every gender identity. And the issue is that maybe sex robots may work against this goal, since they grant the buyer an unrestricted control over a robot that bears a very uncanny resemblance to a human, a real human being. And of course, the concept of concept is not relevant in this interaction. Our mission should revolve around the world that that is more secure for women and other gender identities than to contribute to a technology that can perpetrate a problematic and sexualized view of women. And for those reasons, some people argue that we should actually not allow these sex robots to exist, since they, don't, they are not morally justified. I will leave it to you to decide whether the positive or the negative argument holds more weight. My aim here is to show you that all this very specific technology requires a unique ethical analysis and reflection. It is crucial to address these moral questions before they become a normalized part of our lives and not after, since the consequences can actually be used, right? So, for example, a widespread addiction to sex problems may happen and contribute to our, an already decline in human procreation. And this is very particularly prone to happen in high-tech societies such as Japan or South Korea. A third and final example of a certain ethical waters is related with the application of artificial intelligence in medicine. The goal here is to enhance healthcare by developing AI models that can partially or totally assist in the medical decision making, making the, the medical process more reliable and more efficient than traditional methods of medicine. Although it is true that algorithms can increase the efficiency of medicine in general, for example, by using deep learning networks to diagnostic imaging or assisting practitioners to estimate different kinds of cancer or designing treatment plans. It is important to note that most of these technology are based on very complex kinds of data. And because of that, many of these AI models in medicine are considered black boxes. A system where we provide known information, such as a symptom, and we receive a specific known diagnosis that we can understand. But the problem is that the internal process of this system remains opaque and non-transparent. It's hidden from a human point of view. And what happens then, I think, it's a philosophical void with the, uh, the impact in the practice of medicine. Firstly, regarding the trust that patients can actually have on the medical doctors in general, but also the kind of trust that medical doctors can have in the medical process itself, since they lose part of the epistemic control of their medical practice. At the end, I think we are facing a, a powerful paradox in medicine. Why? Because the doctors will have an ethical obligation to trust a system that they don't understand, and it's more accurate than they are. They cannot offer any kind of explanations to their patients or to their colleagues. And although I think this is a very serious problem, I think we can offer some solutions, ethical solutions, to deal with it. The first solution is to argue that we should simply ban 
all kinds of models in medicine that have a black box structure. Systematical expert cannot explain to any rational manners to the patients its own medical information, so an informed decision can be made by the patient. AI medicine should not be developed or used since the experts do not understand what's happening inside that system. Even though I think this is a plausible solution, I call it lazy, it ignores the, all the potential positives that AI modern medicine can bring us, such as, for example, making quicker cancer diagnosis and saving way more lives than we are saving now. And because of that, I think another solution should be considered. The second solution is basically to argue that we should accept the benefits of AI medicine while just ignoring the negative consequences of it. If society can benefit from a technology that, that helps to lower the cost of public medicine and can actually save more lives with that, even if that comes at the, at the corruption of the trust-based relationship between doctors and patients. Of course, I think there are two problems, at least, with this specific approach. The first big problem is that I think doctors should respect, or we have ethical reasons to think that doctors should respect the rights to, to patients to be autonomous and be informed about their own medical conditions. And this approach doesn't allow that. And I also think that this approach ignores the, co the obscure concept of data, since data here are being used as concrete and clear facts about the world that have the same value independently of the context being used. But actually, we know that data are highly relational and highly contextual. And because of this, I think we can think of a better solution, a less solution. In this third and final solution is to argue in favor of the creation of a second order AI that will be applied into on the black box system. And this would explain what is happening actually inside. And this will make the process transparent to the medical doctor again and therefore to the patient. And this will actually strengthen the trust process between them. This explained AI can actually bring explanations back to the game which are not relevant only for trusting purposes, but actually they, we have also medical advantages in understanding how an AI model reach a specific uh, conclusion. Why? Because usually medical explanations are based on mechanistic or casual structures. And this is a positive thing. Of course, the big challenge of this approach is that there is a negative correlation between performance and transparency. So more performance will create a system that is less transparent in by and obscure by nature, and more transparent system will be less accurate. As I try to show you, crucial areas of what it means to be human will suffer with the impact of artificial intelligence. Different technologies will require different ethical analysis. But I think the most important part of my talk is to, we should all, developers, scientists, politicians, consumers, we should all consider this debate before the technology is fully developed and used, and not after. We must fight this methodological bias between ethics and technology. Instead of applying the technology first and only then reflecting ethically on it, as it was the case with human cloning or more currently, ChatGPT. I think it will be prudent and wise to reverse this and think about the ethics, the ethical consequences first, and only then, and only use the technology when they reach a sufficient ethical standards. This will be my main message for today. Our journey into an, in the AI is happening on a very vast and unpredictable sea. Just as a ship relies on a skilled captain and a crew to navigate safely, I think AI needs also responsible guidance and oversight to some of the ethical insights I tried to explore today with you. Without this strong ethical foundation, AI reach uh, of veering, of course, putting us off unintended consequences. Whether it is in the realms of medicine, human intimacy, or the creation of robotic art, each side of this uh, AI demands its unique ethical analysis. Let us embrace this exciting age of artificial intelligence by ensuring that our voyage into the future is one that benefits all humanity. Thank you very much.